On side, Maru. Shopify Rebellion, Scarlet. So the, uh, the Reapers are coming forward. They're continuing to uh, put a little bit of pressure on here. It does seem like the longer this build is out with every passing week of GSL, the, the better the Zerks were at dealing with it. Oh. He oh. does not get that kill, unfortunately, on that. Yeah, very clutch, turning that drone into a sport crawler right there. One shot away from getting taken out. And I'm kind of surprised to see Maru going back into the bread and butter that is Byun's two racks Reaper expand build here. I was you know, wondering whether we're going to see some Cyclone shenanigans. Of course, the Cyclone now on the new patch, you no longer need a tech lab to pump that thing out. So a lot of Terran players in the current TBZ meta, they like to open with one factory reactor, they get Cyclones out, they get some Hellions out, and they kind of play a little bit of battle mech in the bio, but Bard is going back to the classic TBZ. I mean, why not if it works? Keep in mind, you know, Maro, he always comes into a GSL expecting to go all the way. So he's very good at kind of oh. economizing what builds he chooses. Not, not even a kill on that one Reaper, gets the uh, Creep tumor and gets back out. Uh, and to the point I was making earlier, I think he perceives Sasha or Scarlet as one of the weaker players out of all mm. the Zergs he has to go up against. So maybe he's storing some of his other builds for other players. We'll see. The fourth base can be coming in for Scarlet pretty soon. Taking that third expansion and the armory coming in for Maru. Now I actually missed this. Does he already have an engineering bay with an upgrade? I, I don't think so. So this armory is at an interesting. Yeah, is he going to switch into mech? We have had a couple games where players will go stim bio oh, and this... like push out a little bit and then just abandon the tech entirely. I wonder if this might be for some kind of hellbat timing. He does have four Hellions that oh, he's that not using for map yeah. control. He's just kind of banking them here in the main. Two medevacs are going to be coming out shortly. As Reapers eventually do, will get cleaned up. At least one of them will. Okay, the Hellions are in a really good spot here. They're going to soften those Zerglings up. You can see Maro is still on the move, and I think you're right. I think I was totally wrong. I casted an ASL game just two weeks ago where they did do this. <laughs> no, Maru. It's one where I'm like, oh, he's going to do that same thing. But no, you're completely right. This would make much more sense for Hellbats. The wall ends up. The mm. attack over on the um, the tech lab could deny that upgrade. But what about the push that's going to come out over here? I like this decision by Scarlet. Take down combat shields. It's a critical upgrade here with a mostly marine-based army. That's a lot of Queen's Tasteless. A lot of energy is available for Transfuse. That's going to mitigate the efficacy of these Hellbats quite a bit. So Maru, even though that Scarlet was counterattacking and going for that combat shield's denial on his side of the map, isn't able to find much damage on her fourth. She's been able to parry pretty much every attack that Maru has sent her way. And now she's going into a Hydralisk den with a new patch, those upgrades. Hydra speed and range will be completing more quickly than usual. Upgrades not too far behind the Terran either, so I'm loving this game for Scarlet right now. Already at 85 drones. Yeah, she seems to be in very good shape. We basically have roaming, but this isn't any kind of committed attack here from Maro. He's just trying to clean up whatever kind of creep tumors he can find. We're going to have uh, the drone come over here. I don't even know that this can be denied. I think the Lings are just too on top of these medevacs. And so Scarlet is rapidly continuing to grow out on the map. We have that base that was taken just south of the screenshot here. All the way in the top left, bases are being taken as well. Um, I got to say, Scarlet's looking really good this game. Yeah, she's looking very strong, and I love this double expand. Just in case one of these drop, one of these bases do get denied by a drop, Scarlet is still going to have that extra base on the other side. So even this hatch going to cancel here, it doesn't hurt that bad. As, she, as you pointed out, she has that safety hatchery all the way up in the top left, so her mining, it won't be affected very much by this harassment. She just has to mitigate any further damage. This map does feel bigger than some of the maps we've had in the past, and I wonder if that is partially what's lending, uh, you know, this to Scarlet a little bit more easily as far as oh. growth goes. Hold on, we've got... Are those not hotkeyed? Oh, that's weird. Oh, I wish we could go back to that, actually. Yeah, there's no add-ons, and there were no units being produced, so... To see if the observers uh, highlight that again. For now, Maru is continuing to poke forward on this fourth base. This is a really good position for Maru. Mm -hmm. Scarlet should have the muscle to overpower this. If uh, she can get, get down there in time, it looks like she's going to morph some more Banelings. The tank is really aiding here. A lot of these uh, shellings over here on those queens are huge. Here come the Banelings spilling in. A lot of the infantry taking a ton of damage here. The spread is still looking really healthy here for Maru, to be honest. A lot, of, a lot of Marines remain here for 
Maru, so Scarlet, although the initial trait looked very good, man, if only those Lings from the main base were here fighting, oh. I think she would have been able to clean up all of those Marines. They were so yeah. low on HP, but instead the Triangle Third is just getting battered, absolutely shelled by these Siege Tanks, and I think Scarlet might have even forgotten about the Lings I, in the main. I think she is, does not know. You know, she, I don't think she's one of the pros that uses like the grab all units button very often. No, she's um, usually very good with her control. Yeah, and so because of that, the, the, yeah, it, it just seems like the, the tank position is very tough to bust here. Now, it seems like just barely Scarlet's going to drive this away, but we see reinforcements moving across the map. And, you know, when Zerg dies, it's usually not with the first initial push, it's that wave after wave come in and you know there's just not quite enough banelings there's not enough queens there's not enough stuff that allows you to have that kind of sustainability in the fight um but in a change of pace tomorrow's going to try to uh hack and saw his way through the creep and then go right up here to this fresh base at the top yeah and that's our rich vest being geyser base too so a lot of potential banelings getting denied here by this gas mining getting interrupted luckily the hatch will survive but seven drones do go down and hopefully now, having all of her army collected, she'll be able to stem the tide a little bit as Maru's looking to try and push through the center. And now Maru hitting in two different locations. I'm not sure if Scarlet can actually defend both. I'm seeing just one Hydralisk down here. A lot of drones are going to be killed off if Scarlet doesn't pull them away soon. The Lynx come up and drive this back, but meanwhile, another attack is already ready um, to push up over here. We actually have the fourth command center finally being made. Scarlet's been on several bases, but some of them have been barely mining. You can see this hatchery is so low. Yeah, that hatchery is going to go down very shortly here, but actually Mar is taking the fight here, shelling down these Hydras. Siege Tank Fire comes in, running away from these Veilings. Actually, very good connections there for Scarlet, able to push them away, also deflecting the drop at the top left of the map, but this base is so low on HP. And I think this actually could be close to the breaking point. That tank, is, sorry, that uh, hatchery is so low. Looks like it's just Lings and Hydras fighting back. More reinforcements are gonna come into play here. If the Banelings can't get high enough in numbers, you know, eventually, stimmed Marines and tanks will overpower that. There's the gold base being mined from. That's gonna be a lot more Marines uh, to add into this mix. The lights never turn off back in Maro's base. There's always more uh, infantry and tanks coming out. Now, Maro's picked up. Keep in mind that there are like two very weak points that actually haven't been broken here. So Scarlet's still in the game. I keep calling it like it's about to end because it seems like it is, but at the last second, Scarlet actually manages oh. to save the day. Oh man, you can almost feel the patch right there. Fungal with a little bit less range. Scarlet, despite having those high energy infestors, was not able to catch those fleeing medevacs. Luckily able to dispatch the one there in the top left side of the map. Upgrades now 2-2 for both players, and Maru going for what's basically a Doom Drop, and I think Scarlet has caught wind of this. Okay, they're gonna start pushing up over here, and this is a pretty good bridge to try to take a fight on. If you can just get a couple tanks in there, and then have an area to retreat behind. Oh, this could be huge. Fungal oh, coming in against oh, every single Marine! Oh the Chain Fungal comes through, the Hydras are gonna clean up the Medivacs, and Scarlet with some incredible catching there. Gets so much army supply from Maru, and at the same time, in the top left side of the map, she's taking down that force. She's raiding the gold base, and I think she might have finally done it. I think she did. And you're just seeing Maru's supply plummet below 100. GG, Scarlet takes game one. Yeah, Psy Delta certainly plays a little bit different from Alcyone. I mean, you have a couple options in terms of where you want to expand. You go for the triangle third, you take the linear base instead as your third, and then from there, where do you go for the fourth? Is Maru opening with double marine? is actually going to be able to catch this Overlord coming across the map. That's a pretty significant he, road bump here for Scarlet's build. She's going to have to build two Overlords now at kind of a critical junction where her hatchery at the expansion and is actually, just getting set up. Sorry, there's actually three uh, barracks is being made in total here. Oh, there's, an, oh, there's, there's another one, too. There's actually a fourth one being made. So this is another thing that Beyond used to do. Great catch. Um, I wasn't looking at that. But, but OK, this strategy that's coming here from uh, Maru, it's not without my own criticisms. If, if this doesn't do any damage, you are just stuck. I'm liking this build from Maru. It's a great selection here on Site Delta. The factory is going to be really late, but I love the way the build has lined up right from the beginning, going for that gas, pulling off of the gas as the command center is getting set up and emphasizing the minerals. 
getting four barracks, but one with a reactor. So basically a five barracks in terms of production with Stim and Combat Shield push going to come out. And Maru's even not really revealing his full hand. He's showing six Marines, not more than that. And the scary thing about this push is it doesn't have to straight up end the game. As long as it does damage, which I feel like it's almost guaranteed to do some amount of damage. Yeah. Behind it, you're going to have a factory eventually, you're going to have a starport eventually, and you can kind of wiggle your way into a game where you're just playing a regular bio setup just with less tanks. You can see how the initial group of infantry is coming out to make it look like you know, this little expedition moving out is all he's got. Mm -hmm. Scarlet's aware that she'll... You know, she'll need to check up in here, but really Maru's masked this perfectly. Scarlet scouted as much as she possibly could, and Maru's never shown Oh, anything. my oh goodness. Oh, my God. Yeah, there's no transition right. out of this. <laughs> Take that back. It's an SCV pull, and there is no bailing Nest Tasteless. I mean, is there a way to survive this? I don't know. And notice he's he set the SCVs all the way down through the bottom, so he's uh, Scarlet's going to see this like as it arrives. I think this is a genius strategy here for Maru, but if it doesn't work, Maru loses. Everything is on the line right now with this push. Scarlet making nothing but Zerglings. Plus one Carapace is eons okay. away from okay. completion. She's being really smart. She's buying as much time as possible. She knows that oh. on creep, she's a little bit quicker. Stim she can comes intercept. In. Dude, okay, hold on. Stim comes in and the Queens are slowly getting pushed into a corner. Okay, this actually may be mm. game right here. It's a lot of damage, but keep in yeah. mind, there's going to be no healing on those Marines. True. Queens, they don't trade the best against this. And that next stim is going to be very expensive in terms of hit points. But still, I don't know if the link count's going to be high enough. I don't, I, I mean, Scarlet thinks that she needs to at least give this a shot to do anything. More links are going to come up. Oh. I mean, is this enough? Hold up. That's a lot of links coming in. Dude, hold up. The Marines are, oh my god. I can't believe it. <laughs> what are we watching right now, Tasteless? The Evolution Chamber, it's getting recompleted. The fourth hatchery not even getting canceled. 50 drones to 23 SCVs. Scarlet is just pumping units out right now. And this incredible build that Maru brought to the table here in game number two with this series on the line has just completely fell apart. Well, I mean, where do you even go from here is Terran. You're stuck on caveman tech. Uh, you know, the Ling's, you know, when, when, when Marines don't have the support of Metamax, Ling's over time can just surround them and beat them. They are brittle units. It's easy to forget when you see how much they can be healed. Maro's control is pretty good. He's going to win this fight. So, uh, Scarlet has to be very careful to not overextend. Scarlet really leading on all fronts this, right now. This looks like a pre-Brood War, like 1998 <laughs> StarCraft <laughs> 1 game where one person's just making Zerglings, the other one's just making Marines. Yeah, it feels... Which, by the way, if you, if you go that route, the Zerg wins. It feels unique, but, I mean, Maru isn't completely out of the game. Let's keep in mind that he killed a lot of queens there. Yeah. Scarlet, she cut drones for a very long time. The lair only just now completing. She's and certainly very far ahead, but... There are some chances for Maru, once he gets those medivacs out, if he's able to find some really clutch damage somehow and start to pull Scarlet apart, there is an avenue to victory, but it feels like it is such an uphill battle right now. I feel like you could just bailing bust here, right? I think Scarlet's thinking the same thing. She's That's... not gone above 47 drones. Centrifugal hooks is underway. Oh, she's going to go for the surround on these. These Marines, they're stuck in the open. Big connections with the Bailings. And now the Lings are trying to flood in. They're getting down through the depot, surrounding the siege tank. Bailings getting into the mineral line. SCV's going down. And Scarlet just broke Maru. That's a 2-0 win. I can't believe this. Oh, and yeah, it's Scarlet laughing. She did it again. Wow. Never